when you can look at Europe and you consider that actually it's a gift to us to see what's going on with them as it pertains to their immigration, uh, their refugees, and the multiculturalism that has been going on there for decades. And it's easy to see that it's a path we don't want to be on. Uh, Viktor Orban, he is the Prime Minister of Hungary, he said to Angela Merkel, who's the Chancellor of Germany, you know, the mass migration has caused an increase in crime and terror and has changed their national culture. You also look at what's going on there, sexual assaults, that, that's on the increase. And I'd say that's in France, Germany, Norway, Sweden, Austria, England, all those places because in many of those cases, that's where the immigrants have gone. And they're from warring Islamic countries that carry with them the ideology that women, you know, aren't worth, they're like property. They're not even worth half a man. And actually their sexual assaults occur a lot with children as well. And we're seeing that here in our own country. Uh, the, uh, the Twin Falls case, for, for instance. And when you look at that, that's why I say it's, it's a gift because it's obviously a path we don't want to be on. And if we don't stop the refugee resettlement, we're going to be in, a, in pretty much the same boat as what Europe's in right now. They've been destabilized because of it. Uh, the Brexit vote to leave was in, in, in large part due to uh, the refugees uh, flowing into Europe. And so most Americans get that. Most regular Americans understand this is a program that has much concern. And there is a South Carolina resident, Brian Bilbro, and he and his attorney, uh, Lauren Martell, have brought a lawsuit against the refugee resettlement program. First off, it, it was in the South Carolina. First off, it started there in South Carolina. Uh, they were suing Nikki Haley, two of the refugee resettlement volunteer agencies, um, and the South Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. And this all came about because they were uh, two of a group of about 30 citizens that went in in January to a Senate subcommittee hearing there in South Carolina, and they voiced their concerns over this program. And it pretty much fell on deaf ears. Even one of the Democratic senators said something to the effect of, you know, you know the world is a, is a dangerous place, so you just kind of have to get used to it. Well, that did not sit well with Brian Bilbro. And so this lawsuit that he is bringing, like I said, it was initially against Nikki Haley and those other, um, those other people I, I uh, told you about. But now it has expanded and it is now a federal case. Um, this is now uh, naming President Barack Obama, uh, those others like Loretta Lynch, and they are being named as defendants in this case as well as many others. Um, it very much mirrors the Brownsville, Texas case in the way that it is seeking to restrain the federal government's power and how they are overreaching and going beyond the Constitution. And so this case seeks to, number one, get the facts out about the refugee resettlement program because it hasn't been transparent. And in discovery, those facts can come out and the American public can get to see if they want this program or not. You know, we don't, we don't deserve, since we are the taxpayers, we are paying for all these programs, and we don't deserve to have programs stuffed down our throats if we don't want them. And so this case has merit, because if you look at it, I'll tell you number one, if you look at it, you see the three most powerful South Carolina law firms are involved in defending uh, in, for the defendants. And what is more important is that Southern Poverty Law Center has just jumped in. Well, that is the George Soros-funded Southern Poverty Law Center, and they have $340 million in their war chest for lawsuits. So obviously, they don't want the truth coming out. And remember, like we said, political correctness, you can kill it with truth. And so that's what uh, Brian Bilbro seeks to do, is to bring, simply bring the facts out. He does not stand to gain monetarily from this case. In fact, it's taken money out of his pocket. So I would say that's our second gift. We have, we have these two strong Americans who are standing up, and basically Mr. Bilbro wants to protect his family because he sees what's going on in Europe. He sees the fact that there are, uh, it, it's, when you bring in refugees from mostly warring Islamic countries, it is going to be a threat to your national security because ISIS and they've already said they're going to embed themselves within the refugee population, and they're doing just that. Also, with the sexual assaults, it's personal safety. And he wants to protect his two girls, his two daughters, and his wife. And when he does that, 
he also protects others because if we can stop this refugee resettlement program so that they can look into it and actually you know, we hear so much about the vetting process well this program the refugee resettlement program actually needs to be vetted to see that it, it is safe for Americans and we all know it's not I mean because our top national security officers officers have already said we can't vet these people so we already know that as a fact uh, the other thing is, is this program puts Americans last, and especially our veterans. And you consider that our tax dollars are going to help bring in refugees that could be taken care of one-twelfth the cost if we kept them in place over there in a culture that they are, you know, that they agree with, you, it would cost so much less. And when we keep our veterans on the sidelines as far as their health care, and those kinds of things, that is a disgrace and that needs to stop because we it's time to put Americans first again. Okay? Not only do we need to make American America great again, but we need to put Americans first again. And the other thing that Mr. Bilbrose seeks to do is to understand and to bring forth the facts about the tax burden. It's an unfair, unsustainable tax burden that is placed on the local taxpayer. In three to six months after the federal grants are taken away for this refugee resettlement program, the local taxpayer picks up the welfare for these refugees for decades to come. And that is not fair. That is not right. And so please go to Facebook and look into, it's called the Bilbro Lawsuit. You can join it, like it, keep up with it, watch it, because it's a, it's a historical case. And just like what they're trying to do, as I said, is to restrain the power of the federal government. It's overreaching power. And I believe this story was attributed to George Washington. I believe he used to tell it, but it, he likened the federal government's power to a fire, like a fireplace back in those days that they would heat their house with. You have wood floors. Well, it could be very dangerous if that fire, you know, gets out onto that wood floor. So they had hearths. And the hearths is acts like the Constitution. And that is to keep the power of the federal government bridled so that it does not get out and, and, and hurt the whole country. So that's what they're trying to do just in a nutshell. So I just hope that you would support them and, uh, and thank them for what they're doing. And I think it's going to be very interesting as these facts come out and as Americans get to see what's really going on behind the curtain here. And I think it's going to make a lot of people very vocal and we're going to see a change. Thank you.